This video is prepared by Engineered Fall Protection to give an overview of the ABCs and Ds of fall protection. Within the last 50 years, standards for safety have changed a lot. These photos were taken from the construction of the St. Louis Arch in 1965. The insurer for the project anticipated 13 workers would die during its construction. Luckily, they completed the project without a single loss. Since then, standards have changed, and employers have strict guidelines from OSHA for providing fall protection for employees working at height. OSHA states that fall protection be provided at elevations of 4 feet in general industry, 5 feet in shipyards, 6 feet in construction industry, and 8 feet in longshore operations. Fall protection manufacturers have also come up with thousands of products to keep people safely working at height for almost any situation. This fall protection equipment, when used as an entire system, is commonly referred to as the A, B, C's, and D's of fall protection. They include anchors, body support, connectors, and descent and rescue. Let's start with anchors. Anchors are often referred to as tie-off points. This is the point you attach your connector to. OSHA states, anchors to which personal fall arrest equipment is attached shall be capable of supporting at least 5,000 pounds per employee attached, or shall be designed, installed, and used as part of a complete personal fall arrest system, which maintains a safety factor of at least two under the supervision of a qualified person. Anchors can be fastened for many different applications. Some include concrete, roof, weld-on, beam anchors, straps, vacuum anchors, post and standing seam anchors, just to name a few. Some manufacturers also have over-the-road towable options for fall protection. These units are often used for maintenance of heavy machinery, rail cars, industrial equipment, aircraft, and general construction. This is an example of a rigid lifeline system where the anchor point is attached to a trolley. This keeps the anchor on a vertical plane and allows the worker free range of motion over the entire workspace. This system is similar, but instead of using a rigid rail, the trolley is attached to a flexible cable horizontal lifeline. The next thing to discuss is body support. A full body harness allows for the maximum range of motion while still providing body support in the event of a fall. The importance of a full body harness is to disperse the arresting forces to multiple areas of your body, like the legs, shoulders, back, chest, and sub-pelvic area. Every harness consists of straps, buckles, and D-rings. It's important to stress that OSHA requires users to inspect their harness before each use. There are three main types of body harnesses, construction, confined space, and climbing. A construction harness usually comes with side D-rings that are made for positioning. As you can see here, the worker is able to work hands-free while using a positioning lanyard. Positioning lanyards are not to be used as fall arrest. The only D-ring on your harness that can be used for fall arrest is your back dorsal D-ring. As you can see in this picture, the worker is attached to another anchor using his dorsal D-ring. Another type of harness is confined space. These harnesses come with shoulder D-rings that are used to lower and retrieve workers from confined spaces. The last type of harness is climbing. These are designed for vertical lifeline systems. In this video, you see the worker attaches himself with a carabiner to his chest or sternal D-ring. He is then able to climb the length of the ladder while being OSHA compliant. The C is for connectors. These include hardware, lanyards, and self-retracting lifelines. First we'll discuss hardware. This is a snap hook. This is what you'll attach to your D-ring or your anchor. The snap hook must have two functioning locking mechanisms as seen here. Note, you can only use hardware that is specifically designed for fall protection that is labeled to withstand forces of 5,000 pounds. This is an example of a rebar snap hook. As you can see, it functions the same way as the other snap hook, but the gate has a larger opening so it can be used in a wide range of applications. The last piece of hardware is the carabiner. Like the snap hooks, the carabiner must have dual functioning locking mechanisms. Now we'll talk about lanyards. A lanyard is what connects you from your back D-ring to your anchor point. As you can see here, there are many different types, but these arrows indicate they all have a shock absorber. 
All lanyards being used in fall arrest must have a shock absorber. OSHA requires the maximum forces on the body in a fall is less than 1800 pounds. A shock absorber is a pack of webbing that has been stitched in a way when deployed decreases forces on the body below 1800 pounds. Most manufacturers, the forces are decreased to under 900 pounds. If any of the webbing is torn out, the lanyard must be discarded. The final piece of equipment in this section is a self-retracting lifeline, or commonly referred to as SRL. When anchored above a worker, an SRL extends and retracts, giving the worker free range of motion to work. If a worker should fall, the speed brake activates, stopping the fall within inches. This ensures arresting forces are under 900 pounds. This also increases chances of self-rescue. The last thing to discuss is descent and rescue. OSHA states that employers must provide prompt rescue in the event of a fall. This is crucial because the longer a person is suspended, the higher the risk of suspension trauma. Suspension trauma is also known as harness hang syndrome and orthostatic intolerance. This occurs after a worker has fallen into a fall arrest harness and is suspended in a hanging position until he or she is rescued. When hanging in a fall harness, the leg straps support the body's weight. During this time, the leg straps of the fall protection harness crush the femoral arteries on the inside of the legs, cutting off blood circulation. This is where partial self-rescue comes in. As you can see in this picture, the worker has trauma straps. After being deployed, these straps can be used to stand on, relieving the pressure caused by your leg straps. The most obvious form of rescue is self-rescue. This is simply pulling yourself back up onto the working surface, but when this is not possible, assisted self-rescue is required. Much like the picture on the left, a rescuer could position a ladder in a way that you could climb up or down on your own. In a situation where this is not possible, mechanically aided assisted rescue may be required. In the middle picture, you can see this man is unconscious. The rescuers needed to use a mechanical device to lower him down to safety. The picture on the right is an example of a rescue device. Notice it has a wheel that can be used to retrieve or lower a suspended worker. Other forms of mechanical rescue devices could be aerial lifts, scissor lifts, or cranes with rescue baskets. Regardless of what type of rescue you use, you need to have a rescue plan in place and have the necessary means to perform it on site. This concludes this video on the ABCs and Ds of fall protection. Please visit us at engineeredfallprotection.com for more information. Thanks for watching.